Welcome to the Prayer Motivator devotional broadcast with Daniel White III. We are glad that you have joined us as Daniel White III encourages us to pray without ceasing throughout the day, every day, for the glory of God. Welcome to the Prayer Motivator devotional broadcast. It is good to be with you again this morning. Today I would like to begin by sharing with you a poem titled Talking to God by Emily McAdams. We need to talk to God each day. We do this best through prayer. He's waiting for our call to Him no matter when or where. We can pray in early morning, we can pray to Him at night, but we need to set aside a time to keep Him in our sight. We can tell Him all our worries, we can tell Him all our woes, we can confess all our sins to Him, though He already knows. When we are heavy laden and don't know what to do, let's take his yoke upon us and he will see us through. He's there to help us bear our load. He always knows what's best. His yoke is easy, his burden light. He can put our souls at rest. Somebody ought to say amen right there. The simple purpose of this broadcast is to motivate, encourage, and exhort you to simply just pray so that God can begin to do all sorts of wonderful things in your life and for your life, for your family, for others, and whatever God has called you to do. Our prayer motivator verse for today is Psalm 116.2, which reads, Because he hath inclined his ear unto me, therefore will I call upon him as long as I live. I hope that you will do the same as the psalmist. Our thought for today is that we can never pray enough our prayer motivator quote for today is from C.H. Spurgeon who said, Prayer can never be in excess. Our prayer motivator devotional for today is titled, Fighting the Battle of Evil Secularism in Our Nation Through Prayer by the Prince of Prayer J. Gordon Henry. He said, as a result of the work of evil secular humanists, few are left, even in Christianity, who firmly believe, that is in Christendom, who firmly believe in the uh, historicity of the first 11 chapters of Genesis and the special creation by God as opposed to the false theory of evolution. Those who are, those who do rather are looked upon as ignorant backward people. I have in my possession the California school code that states that evolution is to be taught as scientific fact and that is a case that is the case really across the nation in many uh, school districts and states since evolution is the very heart of secular humanism think of the implications of that requirement why is it that the humanistic ideas have free course in our schools and in our government today. 
and any reference to God is not acceptable. Too long have we Christians forfeited our right to equal treatment under the law. We will never win the war until we know where the battle is being fought as born-again Bible-believing Christians. We possess armaments and artillery that are supernatural. We will either use them or lose the war. Second Corinthians chapter 10 verses 4 and 5 tells us, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations, and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Paul reminded the Christians in sinful Corinth that they possessed resources eclipsing anything the devil could muster. In Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12, he informed the Ephesian Christians that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Actually, this is a spiritual hierarchy of organization. Satan is not omniscient, omnipresent, or omnipotent, but he is organized. In order to do battle against him, Christians need to have on the whole arm of God, which is described in Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 through 17. After this armor is on, the first activity mentioned is prayer. Ladies and gentlemen, the battle is fought in the place of prayer. Now it is time for us to pray. Not just talk about prayer, but pray. Remember, the announcer will provide the information for you to send in your prayer requests at the end of this broadcast. We receive prayer requests every day, and we pray for each person by name every day until they send us a praise report or until they tell us to stop. Now, friend, please join me in prayer. Holy Father God, as we have been reminded here today, help us as your children, as your people, to fight the battle against evil secularism in our society through the power of prayer to you. We pray also that you would bless and guide all pastors, evangelists, leaders, church leaders, missionaries around the world who stand for you and who are truly helping the people. Lord God in heaven, we also pray that you would truly save, lead, guide, and direct all governmental officials from the president on down not only in our government, but in governments around the world. And of course, we pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Holy Father God, we pray now for three individuals who have sent in prayer requests for their needs. We pray that you would meet their needs as only you can. We pray for Chandra. Please help her to have total faith in you for everything. We pray for the pillow. Help him to know and understand English. Extend the days of their lives and heal his dad of all of the diseases 
that rack his body. Lord, we also pray for Glenda. Help her husband, Larry, to get his disability approved. And Holy Father God, we pray for the following people who have accepted you into their hearts, who have chosen to believe on you for their salvation. We pray, Lord, that you would confirm them in the faith, strengthen them in the faith, and have them to grow in the faith to become the spirit-filled and useful Christians that you want them to be. We pray uh, specifically for uh, Krishendra in India, Sylvia in Honduras, Ines in Phoenix, Arizona. Now, Lord, we also pray for the following three people who have been saved for a while but who have decided to rededicate and recommit their lives to you and to your service. We rejoice with these uh, who have made this decision and we pray that they will keep their commitments and rededication to you and be strengthened in the faith. We pray specifically for Laura in Huntsville, Texas, Bimla in Jacksonville, Florida, and Shigozi in Lagos, Nigeria. We pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that you'll lead God and direct all of these to Christian victory in their lives and to be effective Christians, to be a shining light and a witness for thee in these last days in which we live. We pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and for his sake, amen. Now, dear friend, if you are listening to this broadcast today and you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior, please notice these verses from the Bible. Romans chapter 10, verse 9, and Romans 10, 13. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, Thou, you, shall be saved. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now, dear friend, if you are willing to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior today, right now, I am willing to pray with you and lead you in prayer to call upon his name for salvation. Please pray with me right now. Holy Father God, just repeat after me and mean it from your heart. Holy Father God, I realize that I have sinned against you. I've done some bad things in my life. I am a sinner. For Jesus Christ's sake, please have mercy upon me and forgive me of all of my sins. I now believe with all of my heart that Jesus Christ died for me, was buried, and rose again. Lord Jesus, please come into my heart and save my soul and change my life forever. Amen. Now, dear friend, if you have accepted Jesus Christ into your heart as your Lord and Savior, please contact us today so that we can send you a free copy of our pamphlet titled what to do after you enter through the door. The announcer will give you the information necessary. This will help you get started in your new Christian life. Until next time, remember dear friend, pray, think, do. God bless you.